Butterflies and today's video is going to be my poetry mashup reviews. Okay you guys so in the month of April I read three books of poetry and they were all pretty good like I really enjoyed the poetry that I read this month. Um, I wanted to read I really had um, another two to read that I didn't get to but I'm going to get to them next month well this month in May but um, yeah okay. So the first book of poetry that I finished in April was the only book that I read last month that I got from that galley and that is Ivy and Bloom by Vanita O. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm sorry. I'm going to put it in the screen, so I'm not even going to try. But it's by Vanita. And I got this from Net Galley and Vanita Books of Publishing. And, okay, y'all, I really, I really did love this book of poetry. Okay, so first of all, before going into it, I don't know if I had forgot or that I just didn't know that this was supposed to be a book of children poetry. So when I opened it and started and you know, when I opened it and I saw all the beautiful little artwork, I was like, oh my God, that is so cute. Like the cutest artwork ever. It's like, I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, but not in a bad way, in a good way. Cause I'm like, this is a, like, I have to go back and look. I'm like, this children poetry? I was like, it was so good, y'all. It was so cute. I'm like, oh my God, I really, really, really want to buy this and add this to the collection for Claire, for her book collection. Cause I think this would be so cute. Cause I want to read poetry to her. And I want her, I don't want her to be a stranger to poetry, you know? It's like, I love poetry and I write poetry. And, you know, it's not something I'm going to force on her. But I want her to be familiar with it. Because a lot of people aren't familiar with poetry until they go to, like, school. And they have to read it in school. And even then, it makes them not like it. Because, you know, a lot of poetry in schools are, like, that heavy poetry where you have to, like, decipher to really figure out what the poet is really literally trying to say. And what he's writing is not literally what he's saying. So I want her to know that poetry can be fun, too. So I want her to be introduced to poetry because poetry is a really good way like to relax it's a relaxing kind of read depending on you know if it's intense or not but this is just really fun and really sweet and also what i liked about this and i love this in poetry is when poets incorporate nature into their poems because it just makes it so much more refreshing and so relaxed and you know and it's and it was really sweet you really the poetry was really centered around the seasons and everything that happens in the seasons and i was like oh my god that is so beautiful you know? like the writing itself it was beautiful but it was simple you know like I said it wasn't the heavy thing you have to decipher so it was very beautiful and it was very simple but you know this simple poetry was really good because you know sometimes when poets try to do their you know poems really really simple it's not good but this is amazing it was really cute too it's perfect for kids you know I think I would recommend this to read to your children or to you know whatever but also you know it's a good read for you know you as well as an adult because it's it's cute but it brings out the child in you you know it's, it makes you feel like you're a kid again and also I gave this a five out of five stars because I forgot to mention that at the beginning but this was really good I recommend it and I'm gonna link my review and from good reads that I did I'm gonna link it down in the description box all the books I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna link it in the description box with the good reads link so you guys can go and see it the second book of poetry that I read in the month of April was Crank by Ellen Hopkins and y'all I love this book so freaking much I gave this a four out of five stars and I know y'all like if you love it so much why can't you give it four out of five stars but I don't think there's nothing that was wrong with it it's just it's just something about it just didn't make me want to give it a five out of five stars you know like it's just you know when you read that book and you really can't say what's wrong with it it's just you have this feeling that like i like it but it's not five out of five stars you know like i loved it enough to give it four out of five stars but you know not to the point where i give it five and it's just it's nothing wrong with the writing it's just something about it that's just you know it's it's just something with me that i'm just like i don't feel comfortable giving it a five out of five stars but it's a four out of star uh, read for me and guys when I went to look at the reviews on Goodreads um you know after I finished reading it because I don't really look at reviews till after I'm done reading it because I don't want anybody reviews to persuade what I think about it um I think it was the second review I saw um a pretty well known person and I wasn't happy with their review of it because it's like you can really tell the people that don't read poetry often that's not familiar with poetry and it really blew me because they said that um, they didn't like it because they felt like it was hard for them to understand they couldn't understand what was going on and I say it blew me because this isn't thick poetry either this isn't heavy poetry to where you have to decipher line for line what this poet is actually saying she's saying exactly what she's writing you know like it's plain and simple 
it's just like reading a regular chapter book just saying that she put a poetic spin on it you know she made the words poetic you know the book is intense but it's not anything to all oh, i don't understand what's going on and this is a library book and i page flag my favorite poem in here because i want to read it to you guys so you can see what i mean as in it's not heavy poetry she's literally saying exactly what's literally on the page it's not anything you have to think about so i don't see how they can say they didn't understand what was going on okay so the poem i'm going to read to y'all which is my favorite one is called first kiss they say you'll remember your first kiss forever i will it was fourth of july it was christmas fireworks snowflakes sunstroke and frostbite it was all that i could ask for and completely unexpected i expected demands he greeted me with tenderness i expected ego he let me experiment i expected disrespect he called me beautiful i expected him to expect perfection he taught me all i needed to know very simple you guys it's not anything it's literally what she, she's talking about her first kiss you know literally it's not anything you have to sit here and be like oh my god what does that line mean what does that line mean what is she really trying to say it's not something that deep it, it's really not it's like literally there so let me give y'all some background on this work of poetry so basically this this book of poetry is about this girl christina and she's struggling with drug abuse okay and when she she talks about this monster and when she says monster, she's referring to the drug. She was referring, she's referring to meth. She's addicted to meth. And every time she, you know, smokes meth or whatever she does, snorts meth, she has like this other personality, this alter ego that comes out, and her name is Bree. And she always says Bree is stronger. And she's like, uh, she's totally opposite from what she is, what Christina is, which is shy. And Bree is more of an out there person that's like in your face, like, you know, she ain't scared of you or whatever. But Christina is more of the in the shadow kind of person. And she talks about how it gets harder and harder to keep Bree inside and have Christina out. It's like when Bree is out, she's looking from the inside out, but she can't say anything. Like, have y'all seen Get Out? It's kind of like that kind of experience. Like, you're in there, you can see everything that's happening, but you can't, you're not really controlling yourself. And she talks about how she, how she runs in and gets introduced to the monster, and how she gets addicted to it, and everything, how her life starts to change from what it was before, this perfect little quiet life, to now she has this issue with drugs, and now she's trying to figure out how she's going to get the drugs, and how it's changing her, her life, her whole life, how pe the people she's hanging out with, it's changing her whole life you guys that's basically what this book is about and it's really it's intense like i always say i love this book and i would recommend it but just be aware there are triggers in this book there's drug abuse there's rape there's triggers so just to be aware if you're going to pick this book out if you have triggers i wouldn't like you know pertaining to that i wouldn't recommend that you pick it up but this though it's really good so i can't wait to get glass the next time i go to the library i really really enjoyed this like I said, it's intense, but you know, I liked it. I liked reading it because I was like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, everything that happened, I felt it. And when you're reading poetry, you want to you want to get the feelings that the poet is trying to give you. You know, you want to feel what the poet was feeling when they wrote this, you know, when they was going through this. You want to feel it too. So I really enjoyed that I felt this when I was reading this because I was like, yes, this, this is good. What, what are they talking about they didn't understand? What do you mean? That's, it's, it wasn't hard. There's one in the shape of a building too that I really like. It was like really cute. Yo, like I'm so serious. It's here and I can't find it, y'all. Okay, 
well anyway this is really good i thought y'all should pick it up it was amazing i loved it so i recommend it to y'all y'all should definitely go and pick this work of poetry up this is i think is a must should be a must read for poetry like one of the top must reads that everybody that wants to get into poetry should read because i really love this I really love intense poetry. I'm not gonna lie. I like the sweet, soft stuff too, but I really, really love the intense stuff because it really makes you like appreciate poetry because you can tell what this person is going through and they are really getting it out. Like, I love this. So, pick this up. The last book of poetry that I read in April is Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. And I gave this book a four out of five stars, I think. Yeah, I gave this book a four out of five stars. And I really enjoyed this. This is, I knew this going into it. This is um, a work of children poetry. And it was really cute, y'all. It was so cute. I enjoyed reading this. I was in here laughing reading this. I felt so innocent reading this book. I really did. This is also a book I want to buy in Auntie Kalea's collection, too. Because I really feel like this is a good, you know, parent, a parent-child read that you can really sit down and have story time with your children with. Because it was really good. Like, I really enjoyed this. I really think this this too as well as ivy and bloom this would be a great work of art to like expose her to poetry with you know i think this is, and this would be really good for her to grow up with because the poem of simple to wear i can like where she's at the age now where it's literally just me reading to her in a year in two years in three years or four years we can enjoy this when she starts to read it herself she can enjoy it herself and laugh as well as me sitting down reading it to her because it's versatile like that i think this is really good for children to grow up with my two favorite poems in here was smart and that made me like really laugh to myself out loud like i called my fiance at work and i had to read it to him because it was that funny and peanut butter peanut butter sandwich which that one it was more of me shaking my head but i liked it to where it's like you know when something happens and the person doesn't learn from it and they go back and do it again it makes you it's kind of funny but it merely makes you shake your head like seriously you didn't learn nothing from that last experience those are my two favorite poems i want to read smart to y'all because smart works really good but let me finish telling you about it first because it's short but it's funny as hell the poems in this book were really cute, but also, in my opinion, these poems were poems that make children think twice about their actions. Like, it makes them think about the consequences that can happen from their actions. Even though the consequences in here will never happen, but, you know, because it's very far-fetched consequences, but, you know, children's minds go there, so it'll make them definitely think twice about it. Like, I don't want that to happen to me, so I'm probably not going to do that. So I really enjoyed that this did that this did this because I think that's another reason that this is a really good book of points for children to grow with because it's gonna make you think twice before you act. You know, some children just act on a whim and don't think about what the consequences of their actions are. You know, they don't think about the punishment that they can get from doing things. So I think this will make children think twice about it. But not only is this a good book of points for children, I think this is a good part like I think this is a good book of poems for the older audience too like myself which I'm only 20 but you know what I mean like you don't need to be a child to read this like you could be an adult and read this because it's fun it's relaxing it's okay to read children's stuff sometimes it's okay to be relaxed by children's poetry because it relaxes you and it's so innocent and it's so sweet and it's not as heavy as adult and young adult books are you know in content it's more breezy okay and beautiful breezy and beautiful that's what like children poetry is it really makes you feel like innocent and like a little baby you know makes you feel like you don't have any worries when you read children poetry so this is the poem smart okay and i want y'all to listen like really pay attention to this because i know kids do this all the time like that kids that don't know how to count like money and they're really naive and they count it as if they're counting items like one two three four instead of a penny is one cent nickel is five a dime is ten a quarter is 25 they see it as where well, i only have one quarter but he has two nickels i want the two nickels so i was like this is so true but it was so funny though it was cute it was really funny okay my dad gave me one dollar bill because i'm his smartest son and i swapped it for two shiny quarters because two is more than one and then i took the quarters and traded them to louie for three dimes i guess he doesn't know that three is more than two just then along came old blind bakes and just because he can't see he gave me four nickels for my three dimes and four is more than three and i took the nickels to Hiram combs down at the sea free store and the fool gave me five pennies for them and five is more than four and then I went and showed my dad, and he got red in the cheeks, and closed his eyes and shook his head, too proud of me to speak. 
that part is really the part that made me laugh because I'm like, no, he's not doing that because he's proud of you. He's trying to hold himself before he hurts you. He gave you a dollar at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, you only have five cents to show for it. Tell me kids don't do that a lot. Sidewalk Ends by Cheryl Stevenson. Yeah, what? Make 